I was 17. And when I started college, I remember going to classes, like getting up in the morning and like turning on the shower and like getting sick right into the bathtub um, and wondering like, I have no idea what's going on. Like, why, why am I so sick and clueless to what was going on, but I was pregnant. Um, you know, kept, I kept that secret for a little while. There was a lot of shame involved in that. And then it was lonely. What was I gonna do? Was I gonna choose life? Was I, how would I make something of myself? Um, Cause it, it shifted everything. My name is Lisa Anderson. I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I work for an organization called Grace's Table. We walk alongside young moms who are either pregnant or parenting and between the ages of 13 and 24. Um, and our goal is really to provide a safe community where moms can come, um, engage with other young women who are experiencing similar um, maybe struggles or new space in life and really um, I think that the first goal for them is to just be welcomed into community and know that they have a place to belong before they believe that this is a place where they're welcomed um, but from there it's about educating and equipping them and then empowering them to go and take those next steps both as young women but also as moms so it's that transition between adolescence and adulthood And so it was my freshman year that I found out um, that I was pregnant. And I went to a crisis pregnancy center to find out. Um, and I went to my appointment. And I remember the lady's name was Mary. And she came back into the office to like deliver the results of the test. And I just started weeping. And in that moment, and it really shaped me a lot of even still today when I meet with girls of like in that moment Mary sat with me and she didn't push an agenda she didn't um, she wasn't about helping me make any decisions in that moment she just sat and listened and I think there's so that's so powerful to sit with someone in the midst of something and not try to fix it because that that was Jesus to me you know, there were no words, and yet it was everything that I needed to hear. In those really early years, I was trying to figure out how to go to classes, how to work, how to spend time with my child. And while my physical needs were met, my emotional and mental needs were not being met. Um, I needed some people to be pouring into me personally, and so that was a time of even further isolation. Honestly, I feel like is the enemy's like playground to isolate you and get you away from people who can speak truth and life into you. Um, and then there was one of my friend's moms, Janet Toko. I would go over to visit with my friend Terry, and she would always say like, "Let me do your nails." And during that time, right, she would just like rub my hands and make my nails pretty and ask me like how I was. And that was huge to be somebody still wanted to know who I was, um, but then also give me the space to process. That for sure has shaped a lot of what I do um, because um, whether it's that there's stigma associated with teen pregnancy or just that there's not the family support or any of those like physical, emotional, mental needs are not being met, we have an opportunity to draw people in and connect them to community where they can feel grounded and feel like a, you know they have a support system so that they can know truth and, and grow from there. And I've always had this, I guess, philosophy of, for me, of just like whatever talents I have or resources I have, like how can I use those for how God has uniquely designed me um, to reach the person right next to me. Whenever you start a company, you have to come up with a name, right? And for me, I really wanted the name of this organization to be something that was 
um, had meaning to it, significance, and also ties to my personal story. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 has always stood out to me. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. When I was 25, I got um, a tattoo in the middle of my back that um, just says, by grace through faith. Like I drew something, I had them put it on there with just those simple words. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And I remember when I was leaving my job to step fully into Grace's table, it was like verse 10 really came to life for me. And I was like, oh my word, he prepared these things beforehand so that I could walk in them. Like he knew, he knew that I was gonna become a mom really early. Um, was that his perfect plan for me? I don't know, can he use that? Absolutely. And, but he knew what all of these steps were gonna become. And I think for me, there was comfort in that, of just knowing he knows the story. My, my steps are ordered. Um, man, sometimes it would be nice to know what the next one is, but he's already thought about them. And for me, that gives me some peace. I tell the girls all the time, I hope that you know that you're madly and passionately loved by the creator of the universe. Like. Right? I want them to have a healthy whole life. I want them to, to know stability. I want them to not struggle. I mean, we all struggle, right? Like there's all kinds of things that you want. And at the end of the day, I really want them to know how deeply they are loved. Regardless, we can't miss the person who's standing right in front of us um, because we don't know what she's going through. When we push an agenda, we miss we miss the opportunity that's right in front of us to love. Her decision may not always be what I would want for her or what I would want for her child's life, but what I need her to know is that she is valued and that she can continue coming here and having support and that we're gonna walk with her in and through that.